you back in the house of the Lord this morning. We would ask you, if you would, to turn to the Psalms this morning. In chapter 92, we want to continue, as I mentioned, about singing praise to the Lord. We need to Amen. continue uh, not only singing, but praising Him with uh, our bodies, with our work, with the uh, our possessions that we have and praise him because he gave them he gave it all to us amen listen this morning if we if we can just look around and, and understand what's going on uh in our country this morning right i i can't i can't help but believe that the devil has got everything gathered together and he's wanting to throw some stuff out, and uh, he's not satisfied with what was going on, even though the world was, is wicked. He's Amen. still not satisfied. He wants everything to go his way, and listen, he he knows what strengths to pull, and you're seeing him pull them right now through different fights, through different ways. Amen. And uh, the thing that's so bad and so disturbing to me is that our country has went to the point that they are uh, rising up against churches. Yep. Churches that stand for the truth, uh, they're, they're uh, threatening them, and uh, so you might as well just look out. Uh, it's, it's on the way. Yep. But in all of that, we need to praise the Lord. Yeah. And we need to say, hey, uh, I'm ready to go home. Amen. And uh, the only thing keeping me right now is, or is death, or the Lord appearing and saying, "Come on up hither." And so this morning we need to praise the Lord. So in verse one of nine, uh, Psalms ninety-two, we see here it says, "It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, Amen, and to sing praises unto His Thy name, O Most High." Now this morning. Uh, we need to have a prayer on our lips, a song in our heart. We need to realize this morning who's on the throne. Amen. We need to understand and realize when, when we pray a prayer that Jesus Christ is our mediator. He takes this prayer to God and he, he says, these are my people. And so God cannot deny the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. He cannot deny. It. He can. He can make decisions about when and if it's good or what. But listen, we have a straight line. Amen. We have a straight line this morning, right up to the portals of heaven. And we so many times don't praise the Lord for that. We don't know the blessing that we have. Amen. And so this morning, uh, we got a, we got first seat right in front of the most powerful, most glorious, most wonderful thing that is. Amen. And that's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this Amen. morning, the, the psalmist says here, tis, tis a good thing. And when he uses the word good, you know, when Jesus talked to the man and he said, the man said to Jesus, good master, uh, would you do this or good master uh, this or that and and Jesus said to him why call you me good and Jesus saying this morning uh, in, in in the scriptures there that listen he honors the father he honors him by saying he is the good one he is the one and here is he, as the psalmist says it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise unto thy name, O Most High. Amen. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning, not only in the morning, and thy faithfulness every night. Amen. So that gives us a, a start and a finish. When we get up in the morning, we should be praising him. And listen, bless God, when we lay down in the night before we close our eyes and sleep, we need to be praising him again because right. he's watched over us that day and he's blessed us that day and he's given us, he gave us all the things that's comfortable for us. And so he's our he's our helper and our, and, and our need of trouble and a time of trouble. And so he says here, 
upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hath made me glad through thy works. Amen. Okay, I will triumph in the work in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. Now, I want you to turn just a minute with me, if you would, to 101. And I, I got something I want to read there before, before I get past this. 101.1. And let me read this. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord he is God, it is he that maketh us, Amen. and not we ourselves. Amen. We are his people. Listen to this. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, Amen. and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him, to him, and bless his name, for the Lord is good. Amen. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. That's the God that we serve back in the lesson this morning. He says here, O Lord, how great are thy works. In verse 5, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, and this, to me, pinpoints the area, the time that we're in. It is that it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, are most high forevermore. For lo, thy enemies, O Lord, for lo, thy enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. Amen. But my horn, or my strength, shall thou ex exalt like the horn of the unicorn, or a wild ox. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also shall see my desires on my enemies, and my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. And this is a promise from the Lord. This is the psalmist writing, and he was... He was a man after God's own heart. Right. And listen here. He, th these people that are persecuting the churches and things, and they've done it for years and years and years and years, and they've died in their sins, and they're suffering for it. Listen, they don't understand. They do not understand what it's all about. And, 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 you know, we need to be in prayer for them mm -hmm. that the Lord would open their eyes and they wouldn't have to go and suffer like so many that's in hell is suffering today. Because, listen, there's crying and, and there's crying and gnashing of teeth right now and, and, and there's, no, there's no relief. And, right. and, and these people, if I, I assume that if they could come back, I don't know it. Their if their nature was changed, mm -hmm. they would serve God. But listen, people, those people, are not God's people. Right. They're the devil's saints. They're the ones that he has uh, led through this and caused him to them to persecute those that are trying to serve the Lord. And this is what he said for lo by in verse nine. Uh, uh, now in verse eleven, my eyes shall also see my desire on my enemies, and my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish. Like the palm tree, he shall grow like the cedars of Lebanon. People will read that and say, well, I'm not growing like the palm tree and I'm not flourishing. Listen, you don't know. They don't know what they're saying right. this morning. Listen, as long as you're on this side of death, you have the opportunity to uh, to seek the leadership of the Lord. You have the, so many people think that they're serving the Lord and they're not serving the Lord. They're right. not Christians. They're not they're not flourishing because they don't serve the Lord, and yet they're blaming God for it. Right. And I tell you this morning, that's our problem this morning is that people does not understand what the Bible says because their eyes are closed and they've not been they've not been revealed or shown the, the truth of God's word. They've got some two-bit 
thing that's out there and is, and, and is preaching something that's not true to them and keeping them blinded and hoodwinked and they cannot get the truth. Right. So when things don't really come their way, the fruit of God and God is not what he says he is and they go their way following this false prophet and there they go right down to the modern right. pit. Right. He says here, here the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like the cedars of, in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And I believe this morning that's a place that you've got to be. That's a place that it's, it's, it's like being at Jesus' feet. It's a place of learning. You need not to forsake the assembling of, of, of Amen. the church as it comes together. You need to be there because, listen, 99% of them that's there may not get a good message, but listen, praise God, that one that needed it so much will get that message, and, and, and his eyes or their eyes will be open. And so it's good to be in the house of the Lord this Amen. morning. It's good not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as we see the time come. It's good because, hey, we don't we don't bypass the table every day. Right. We go there and feed our uh, old fleshly body, and, and it's good. But the thing of it is, it's good to come to God's house and to serve God. It's good to pray. It's good to sing songs of Amen. Him. It's praise Him and praise Him and praise Him because this this day is the day, it may be the last day we've got. We need to praise Him. Amen. And we need to, to be a blessing to anyone we can. Notice in verse 14, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Now that's, that's speaking to me. You know, I'm able, I'm still able, I thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. I praise the Lord that I'm able to stand up and sing a song or read a song or read the scripture or make some statements about how that the Lord has blessed me and, and praise his holy name. I'm, I'm thankful. And listen, as long as I'm able to do that, I'm going to do it. And there may be a time come when uh, my old mind flips over to the other side and I can't even tell you my name. But right now, Amen. The Lord is blessing me, and the Lord is helping me, and the Lord is showing me the, some of the things that's going on in the world, and he said, hey, uh, that's them, and that's the way that it's going to end. And so I'm, I'm thankful to the Lord this morning that I know him. And, Amen. And so he says here, to show, to show that the Lord is upright, Amen. he is my rock. And you know, the brother preached the other night about the rock. Mm -hmm. uh, and we sung the song about that solid rock and having that grip on that solid rock. Listen, to show that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. So there's where we need to come to this morning. I would, if you would now turn back over to the Psalms. In Psalms 89, we want to... We want to read a few scriptures there and try to make a few comments. But he says in verse 1 of, of 89, uh, I will sing of the mercy of the Lord forever. Amen. And there's nothing, there's nothing this morning like the mercies of God. You're right. You think about the mercies of God, that he had a son that he loved. He sent him to this world to die for mine and your sins, and we did not care diddly squat about nothing. Right. All we had was what we had inherited from Adam and Eve, and we were sinners on our way to hell. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come to this earth and to fulfill 33 and 30 years on this earth and to die on the cross Amen. to pay for mine and your sin debt. And here he said this this morning, I will sing of, of the mercies of God. God has showed us mercies Amen. beyond anything that we can mention. We don't, we, don't, we don't even know how to give him thanks for them. You're right. Because, listen, we don't understand God. We don't understand how great he is. And so the mercies that God bestows upon us, listen, I can say, Lord, forgive me and be merciful unto me. And thank you for your mercy. But listen, it's words, people. I, I cannot, I can't grasp them. 
uh, in this old fleshly body. This fleshly body don't want to hear that. And so, you know, uh, the mercies of God is, is out of reach from this body. Right. They don't Amen. understand it. But we know this morning that they're there. And we know this morning that he says, uh, with my, in verse 1 there, with my mouth, well, I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. And this, this morning, see, is what we need to do is to make his, his mercy that, that we can understand known unto all that are around us and how that he is merciful to us. Amen. Listen, I can tell you, I can sit here for uh, two hours and tell you all the things that this old body's went through and it's still living. Amen. And listen, it wasn't supposed to. I mean, it was right, it was, it was right on a teeter-totter two or three times. And listen, God seemed fit, right. had mercy on me, and through the prayers of, of, of my, my family and my loved ones, listen, He's, he let me keep on living, and I can't, you know, I can't really exalt him like that I sh could, I should, like I want to. I can't do it. Right. But the thing of it is, I know this morning that there's mercy Amen. in my life. There's mercy all the way down through it from the time I was born, even when my mom, even Amen. when my mama taught me about the Lord Jesus Christ. He was bestowing mercy upon me then. Right. He showed me things that uh, through her that I didn't know, and my, my daddy could care less. But listen, my mother, he used her to, to, to help me, and he, that was that mercy. And so he said here, for I, I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Now, this don't stop with David. This don't stop with David because, listen, God has made a, a, a covenant and Jesus came to this world and God had told Jesus, he, Jesus said, I can say what my father told me. And Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Amen. And so this morning, we can take this to, to heart here. He says, I have sworn unto David, my servant, thy seed will I establish forever and build up my throne to all generations. And so that goes to us because, listen, God sent Paul and, the, and, and the, all to the Gentiles, and we came into this, and so we entered into this promise. Now, thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne so to all generations, and the heavens shall praise thy wonders. O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. Amen. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Right. There's none. There's none in the heavens, there's none on the earth, there's none nowhere that can be compared to the Lord because he said, I am the Lord. And he is all of it. He Amen. is all of it. And we understand that and we know that and we but yet this old flesh don't don't really want to grasp that. But he is Lord of all. And he says in verse uh, uh, seven, I believe it is, uh, uh, seven, God is greatly to be feared Amen. in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all of them that are about him. And so you say, you fear God. Yes, we're to fear God, but yet we love him. Amen. He loves us and we know that, but listen, his judgment, his justice is true and he is going to do what he thinks is best for us. And if it takes, if it takes a spanking, a whipping, right. a beating, Amen. listen to Encourage our hearts and to strengthen us, and it sounds stupid to people, but that's the what that's what happens mm -hmm. when God said He loved us and that we're to fear Him. We're to fear Him. We don't need to do things that we know that is wrong in the in the face of God. And so this morning, when the chastisement comes, our best bet is to do, and our best 
thing is to do is to say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Because you chastened me, and that's just like daddy chastening child. Listen, he does it, and he's supposed to do it, and I know it don't happen every time, but he's supposed to chasten that child because he loves them, not because that he just wants to beat up on them. And right. that's not God's way of doing things. But the Lord chastens us because he loves us. And if we can get past, if we can get past that and see why God chastens us, we can turn right back around and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Because that's what he that's what he wants to do, guide us. Now, in verse 8, O God, O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee? or to thy faithful round about thee. Thou rulest the raging of the sea. Amen. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Thou hast broken Rehab, uh, Rahab, which is a type of Egypt, in pieces as one of his slain. Thou hast scattered thy enemies with the strong arm. Amen. And then he says, the heavens are thine, and the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast found them. And as I, I want to mention something here too, is he used this word Rahab. In, in uh, Hebrews, it speaks about Rahab, and in James, it speaks about Rahab. And if you look at the lineage of Rahab, it comes right on down to David. And, he, and Rahab was the harlot, mm -hmm. but he blessed her, he forgave her, and, and that, that, is, that is the, uh, the thing I wanted to see, if I can see it. I believe it's in uh, Exodus, I think it's in Exodus, somewhere in Exodus. Exodus uh, uh, 14, 26, I believe what I got, let's see, let me write. Exodus 14, 26. It's, it's in 26, uh, 14, I believe it is. No, that's not it. But anyway, I, I, I wanted to bring it to you. You, you, you. you study that. You study the the uh, lineage of Rahab, the heart. And when, when it's all said and done, she married o, o, Obadiah, I believe it is. And, uh, and come on in James, I mean, and... and uh, and uh, 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 David come out of her anyway. But anyway, that's that's the thing with Rahab, and and that was the place where that uh, that uh, that Joshua come in and destroy, and uh, she had, she had kept the the uh, uh, ones the spies there and right. helped them, and that was uh, uh, her works. And James uses it as a works. And uh, uh, Hebrews uses it as a blessing from God and a, a forgiveness. Or, but anyway, that's that's something else you look at. But anyway, I got to go. Uh, in verse uh, 13, I will read this and, and, and look. Thou hast a mighty arm, strong is thy hand, and high is thy right hand. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Amen. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted for the Lord is our defense and Amen. the Holy one of Israel is our king. That concludes our lesson this morning. I hope that uh, uh, something might be said or that will encourage you to do uh, more studying on this but uh, we, 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 were, we, were, we were spoke to this morning I had about this about this blessing and uh, I was trying to pray to the Lord and, uh, and, uh, and I opened my Bible and the first word I see was blessed. And I said, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm blessed. And, and, and I, want, I want to tell everybody uh, this morning, 
you're saved, if you're saved, and you know you're saved, you're blessed. Amen. Amen. You have escaped. You have escaped all the trials and tribulations of this world uh, to a certain extent because you can look to someone that you know that can take care of your problem. Amen. And listen, you you got a home with the Father in heaven. So this morning, uh, encourage yourself by thanking the Lord for all He's done for you. Amen. And, uh, I think you'll feel you'll get a blessing. Thank you all so much for listening.